Hi guys, welcome back to Reading with Mrs. Schleiss. So today we're going to read chapter 7 of Mrs. Rupee is Loopy. So now remember, they went to the library to meet Mrs. Rupee. They didn't know her, but they met some guy named Sid, he was George Washington. He kind of looked like somebody that didn't, maybe wasn't a man, right? And then the next day, Mrs. next time they went back, Mrs. Rippey was back. And she didn't know who this George Washington guy was. She didn't know that he was in the library. But she said she was sick at home. So, I don't know. And then last night, we read about Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed was in Mrs. Rippey's library again. And we don't know why he was there, but we know he was. So, Tonight, we are going to read One Small Step for Man. Hmm. Now, my friend Max today online made a comment that he thought maybe they were going to visit the moon. Um, or maybe go to outer space or some, or Mars. So, let's see what, what happens. So, Chapter 7, One Small Step for Man. By the time we weren't sure... Oh, sorry. By this time, we weren't sure if Johnny Appleseed and George Washington had been to our school or if it was just Mrs. Ruby dressed up in a funny costume. But we were sure of one thing. Mrs. Ruby is loopy. We have proof, Michael said. My father is a policeman, he said, and if you want to be sure of something, you have to have proof. He says the proof is in the pudding. What does pudding have to do with it? I asked. Beats me, said Michael. Your dad is weird, I said. How are we going to prove that Mrs. Rupee is dressing up in funny costumes, Ryan asked. We'll get her fingerprints, Michael said, all excited. That's what my dad does every day in the whole wide world. Everyone in the whole wide world has different fingerprints. That's true. If we get Johnny Appleseed's fingerprints, then we get Mrs. Ruby's fingerprints. I can have my dad test them. And if they're the same fingerprints, then that will prove that Mrs. Ruby was just pretending to be Johnny Appleseed. Me and Ryan agreed that Michael was a genius. The next time we had the library, we bought a juice box with us. So we would get Mrs. Rupee's fingerprints. But when we came into the library, all the lights were out and the shades were down. It was really dark. At first we thought the library was closed. Then we heard a noise. It came from the top of the treehouse. We all looked up. Somebody was coming down. The ladder. Whoever it was had on a spacesuit and was moving in slow motion. Some movie, music began playing over the loudspeaker. The eagle has landed, the astronaut said. Finally, the astronaut reached the bottom rung of the ladder. It was hard to see his fa a face through the space helmet. It's got to be Mrs. Rupee, Andrea said. I'm not Mrs. Rupee, the astronaut said. My name is Neil Armstrong. It is 1969. I am about to become the first helmet, human being to set foot on the moon. Slowly, Neil Armstrong put one foot on the floor of the library. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind, he said. We tried to convince Neil Armstrong that he was really Mrs. Rupee dressed in a spacesuit. But he kept saying he had never heard of anyone named Rupee. Neil Armstrong spent the rest of the period showing us books about the moon and the sun and the stars and outer space. It was almost not boring, but... Not quite. Would you like would you like some juice, Mr. Armstrong? Michael added, holding out the juice box. No, thank you, Neil Armstrong said. 
I've got to be getting back to Earth now. And I believe you've got to go back to Miss Stacy's class. Then he climbed up the ladder and got into the treehouse. Michael was disappointed that he didn't get Neil Armstrong's fingerprints. When we got back to class, I told Miss Daisy all about Neil Armstrong stepping out of the surface on the surface of the moon for the first time. Wow, that sounds exciting, Miss Daisy said. Do you still think books are boring, AJ? Yes, I said. Goodness, that AJ, he just keeps hearing all these great things that are in books. And he still thinks they're boring. I don't know how you could think that at this point. But that was chapter seven of Mrs. Rupee is Loopy. And tomorrow we're going to read chapter eight, Nursery Rhyme Week. Hmm, so we might hear some nursery rhymes. Well, let's see what happens tomorrow. I hope you're enjoying Mrs. Ruby is Loopy by Dan Gutman. This is part of the Why My Weird School series. Uh, if you're following along, this is book three, and I think you've probably figured out why I picked this one. Because it's a librarian, and she's kind of loopy, so it was close to my heart. All right, guys. I hope you have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. Bye, friends.